All right, we were here with Nathaniel Buzolic, who um, recently was killed off the Vampire Diaries, sadly, as Cole, but in the land of Vampire Diaries, you never know when they will be brought back. Yeah, that's true. I guess that's the kind of nice thing about, uh, you know, this sort of fantasy world. There is always an opportunity to come back, whether it's from a witch or from Silas or uh -huh. from someone else. But, but at this stage, uh, it doesn't look too positive. Okay. And um, why don't you talk a little bit about your... Uh, big break into acting. When did you decide you wanted to do it? And um, yeah. talk a little bit about your journey. I know you're from Australia originally. Yeah, originally from Australia. Um, I guess acting uh, essentially started for me when um, when I was in high school. Um, I was a super shy and sort of quiet kid. And um, I started to do just sort of a drama school sort of thing, like just took a class. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think it was like the first time I was on stage and I made someone laugh. Um, that I sort of, I guess, discovered the, uh, um, you know, the uh, the magical thing of storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, and you can sort of affect people. So that's sort of where it kind of first started, and then uh, eventually um, my drama teacher sort of encouraged me to uh, audition for the um, Australian Theatre for Young People, which is, um, which is sort of like a theatre company in Australia, and I got a, a, a three-year scholarship with them. So that was sort of like the start of it. Mm -hmm. And then from that, um, you know, I sort of started to get an agent from, you know, doing theatre, and then um, my first sort of, I guess the first gig that I kind of got excited about was... Um, I had a really, really tiny role in uh, a movie called Dirty Deeds, which had um, John Goodman and um, Brian Brown. And I had like the smallest of roles, but, uh, and, you know, and Sam Worthington was also in it uh, at the time. And, um, but it was just sort of being on set and seeing how that whole process works and, um, you know, getting to sort of spend a couple of days with these sort of actors. And it was just sort of, I guess that's sort of where the bug sort of bit me. Mm -hmm. And you also did a soap while you were in Australia. Yeah, yeah, I worked on a soap for uh, you know for 16 months, and um, yeah, that was fun. It was it was a really fast turnaround, and you know, unfortunately, the show sort of wasn't as successful as they would have liked. But like you know, I guess as part of the journey, everything happens for a reason, and that sort of you know I wasn't sort of like I mean, if it was still going today, I probably would have still been in a contract. So where uh, when did you decide to come over to America to pursue your career here? Yeah. Um, well, America sort of actually happened accidentally. I mean, it was always a dream of mine to work in Hollywood, but um, I didn't intentionally come out here to get work. I was um, was actually working for Disney Channel, uh, hosting a kids show, mm -hmm. and um, they asked me to, um, to to interview some of the Disney Channel celebrities. And um, I'd come out, and um, I was actually just doing an interview with um, Alison Mashaka, who um, I guess she's probably well known for her music and also she was in Hellcats which was on right. CW for a short time um, and her manager came up to me at the end of the um, end of the um, interview and she said you guys had really really great chemistry uh, is there any chance that you're an actor and obviously that's what I was doing but I was just working as a host just to make a little bit of money and um, so I sort of said yeah I am and she asked me if I'd be interested in auditioning for something and um, I auditioned for a pilot for uh, for the Disney Channel and uh, it came down to me and uh, another kid and I unfortunately didn't get it but um, but that sort of uh, got some agents and some people in the industry sort of uh, curious about who I was mm -hmm. and um, ended up coming back for a pilot season and sort of started the audition process so that's sort of how I guess you know my journey in the US started and you know tested for a few shows and you know eventually led me to a place where I got uh, offered Vampire Diaries so now, obviously, you and I, our interaction is limited to these conventions, but you seem to have a great personality to be a host. Did you enjoy doing that? You're a very social person. Yeah, I did enjoy hosting. Um, I think the reason that I stopped is because, um, you know, like my passion for acting was really what fueled me into the industry, and, and I, I didn't necessarily want to be interviewing people I guess you know it wasn't that wasn't where my passion sort of lie I always wanted to tell stories and um, and I didn't want to be someone who's asking someone how they told their story so I guess that's sort of where I made a, a conscious um, you know uh, effort to stop sort of hosting because I did get offered a few jobs but I just thought oh no I really want to sort of stay back to my you know my acting route so and when you booked the Vampire Diaries, did you realize that you were going to go into a show that had such a following where you were going to change your life in terms of your fan interaction, in terms of your... Yeah, uh, no, look, you know what, it's, it's kind of funny when I... When I first um, when I first auditioned for Vampire Diaries, because I had obviously auditioned for one of the principal roles on the original show, I knew it was going to be I knew it was going to be big and I knew it was going to be extremely popular. But um, you know, I, I didn't. I, I you know you can't really 
picture what it, what it's like until you're actually in that position. And when I did get the job, and I realised how, how huge the fan base is and how how passionate the fans are, it was, it's sort of overwhelming. It's um it's amazing. Like I think it it truly is one of the most popular shows on TV around the world. You know. Do you uh, when did you first realise that um, you knew that you were going to do this as a career? Like when did it hit you that you knew this was your calling? Yeah. As a kid, even as a 12 year old kid, I always wanted to do extraordinary things. I always wanted to do something that not many people get the opportunity to do. So I think, you know, I mean, I can go back, you know, as far back as 12, mm -hmm. when I sort of would tell people I don't want to have an ordinary life, you know, and, and in order to have something quite extraordinary happen in your life, you, you have to take a lot of risks, and this business is full of them, and, you know, you have to really, you're basically gambling everything, mm -hmm. you know, it's a sort of all or nothing sort of business. So I, I would say as far back as 12 is when I said, I want a life that's going to be, you know, it's going to be a good story, not sort of just, you know, your, your run of the mill sort of nine to five. What are you currently pursuing now in terms of uh, film and television? Are you looking to switch up into film yeah, roles? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm just, you know, at the moment I'm, I'm sort of in a position where I'm just auditioning, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just sort of like every other actor, just going out there every day and, and, and trying to book a job. Do you have interest in uh, pursuing any kind of theatre work in New York? Is that something you're interested in? I would love to at some mm -hmm. point, uh, absolutely, but I guess, you know, it's it's sort of a difficult thing. You really want to keep your focus on, on one area just to sort of, so sort of film and television is what I'm, I'm sort of working mm -hmm. towards. I feel like if I put too many eggs in too many different baskets, Basket, yeah. I'll, I'll end up with nothing. Now, what's one thing, um, you're also a very grounded actor, a uh, very grounded person, rather. What is one thing that keeps you grounded, and what do you do in your free time? Uh, well, I think the thing that keeps me grounded, I mean, it, w without a doubt, is my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's the most humbling thing you can sort of um, possess, you know, and I think uh, it's, it's my greatest strength and... Um, you know, it's one of those things that I really have to work on, and and it's something that without it, I probably wouldn't be in the business today. It's 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 truly is like you know, I really feel like God has pushed me into this direction, and, and He's kept me there, and, and and He's sort of led me on a path to, to teach me a lot about myself and a lot mm -hmm. about you know others and the interactions that we sort of have in life. So, yeah, like my faith is you know paramount. I mean, it it, it comes above everything else. I mean, uh, you know, there was a stage in my life where acting would have been the number one thing I would have said is my number one goal, but mm -hmm. but today that's definitely not the case. And, you know, my, my first objective before absolutely everything else is to sort of glorify God. And, um, and as long as I'm sort of, you know, as long as I'm doing that, I'm happy. Um, and then everything else sort of comes in at second place. What uh, advice would you give to people who are just starting out in the business? Um, you know what, I mean, my advice is going to be biased, but I, I think, you know, you really need to have something grounded in yourself, whether it's your faith or, or something, because it is a, a really, really tough business, and um, it's not it's not a business that's um, for the faint-hearted, you know, it's it's a cruel business, it's a subjective business, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and then there's no sort of guarantees or promises, so you really have to be 100% certain of yourself and 100% uh, convinced of your ability and, and I think you know particularly in this world there's such a expectation uh, on people just generally in life to to fulfill a certain level of standard and this business is no different so I think if you don't have something above that mm -hmm. you'll you'll crumble and even if you are successful you'll get to the end of your career and realize that it just ripped you apart so I think you definitely need something like for me it's my faith that mm -hmm. keeps me sort of just like you know not, you know, I'm in this world, but not of it. Right. Well, there's so many celebrities nowadays that um, are in the forefront and in, are doing things that are not necessarily beneficial to them. It's very um, cool to see somebody like yourself who is successful and a positive role model to people. Um, and it, it's just good to see. Yeah. And so it's, Thank you. It's nice to see somebody who is proud of, you know, who they are and their faith. And, you know, it's, it's good to have positive young people actor role models and yeah. that people can look up to so yeah well I think you know that's one of the things I sort of when I first first got onto Twitter I noticed that a lot of people were just either criticizing or attacking someone else mm -hmm. for, the, for the sake of humor and there wasn't a lot of um, positive influences going through that sort of machine so you know it, I think it is important to have someone that's likes to do something that's not exactly just to fall into the sort of crowd and mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to to you know, to be funny and make sort of crude jokes on on Twitter, but you know, at the end of the day, that's a short-lived sort of uh, um, fulfillment for a lot of people. And I think there is a need, uh, definitely with young people, 
for something that's sort of more inspiring and more encouraging. Um, so it's it's been really humbling for me to see the response that I've had on my Twitter. You know, mm -hmm. I actually when I first um, when I first signed up to it and, and and made that commitment to sort of talk about my faith, I I, I wasn't sure which way it was actually going to go. Um, I thought there might be a huge backlash of um, of you know people sort of you know because any time that we talk about you know, your faith or your religion, it's, it's a really touchy topic and it's a sensitive topic and I think um, more so in our society today than ever, we've sort of been encouraged not to express what we believe in very often because mm -hmm. of fear of social rejection and, um, you know, I, I, I admire kids who are brave enough to stand up for what they believe in and, and, and not care what other people think and that's such a difficult thing today, especially with bullying that goes on in schools and, and all that sort of stuff. We always try and fit into like this massive general norm that everybody sort of finds acceptable but sometimes that's you know not the best way to walk so do you ever feel um, that uh, as a side thing to your acting that you could uh, go around the country and do any kind of public speaking and motivational speaking you seem to have that passion and also the skill for it you're yeah look, if, if it's God's will you know, yeah. and if and, and if it glorifies his name, I would I'd be the first one to do it. But you know, um, I, I really try and just you know follow his lead and, and, and follow the direction that sort of he pushes. And and, and that that sort of is something that's been really interesting for me. Uh, the closer and, and the more committed to my faith I've become, the more I've heard his voice, mm -hmm. and the more I've realised that he really has control of this whole situation as yeah. long as I stay obedient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Nathaniel, thank you for sitting down with us. No uh, I admire everything both that you do on screen and Thank you very much. in your life. You're a very positive role model for not only actors but also for just, you know, your fans in general. So I appreciate this time that we uh, spent together talking. No worries. Thanks, Take care.